and welcome to today's episode of the vlog series. Today we're going to talk to you about the MRCP. Uh, we're going to do a full overview of everything you can expect from the MRCP. Um, for those of you that don't know, it's the Royal College of Physicians uh, set of examinations that lots of IMG doctors use to join the GMC register and it's particularly valuable if you're looking to come in as a senior registrar or a consultant uh, in medicine or acute medicine or elderly care or any of the allied medicine specialisms. You might be wondering whether it's worthwhile sitting MRCP over the PLAB exams. Um, and in order to work out whether it's right for you, I think it's important to make an assessment between them. So PLAB is a two part examination, which is aimed at assessing the clinical knowledge and skills of a doctor entering FY2 level. Whereas uh, MRCP includes three parts of an examination. So uh, there's two theory parts, part one and two, and then a clinical assessment part uh, called PACES. So it's assessing a doctor who in the UK would be equivalent to someone coming into the ST3 level. Uh, ST3, for those of you that don't know, is registrar or resident or senior trainee, that kind of grade. So I think the, the main distinction to make between the two is if you're looking to sit the PLAB exams, you're probably going to be aiming yourself at a more junior level. Whereas if you're willing to sit the three parts of MRCP, then you're looking at a more senior level when you come into the NHS. Um, obviously, a more senior exam is going to be trickier. It takes a bit longer. It is a bit more expensive. But of course, it means you get access to those higher level uh, positions once you get into the NHS. The timing uh, of the examinations is really important and lots of doctors actually, if you're serious about moving to the UK uh, as your long-term career goal, it's probably worth starting to prepare for them before you even graduate your MBBS um, or at least in your internship year. So in order to um, qualify or to be eligible for MRCP part one, the very first part, you're going to need that primary medical qualification. So it's got to be MBBS or MD um, and it's got to be on the GMC's recognised uh, institutions list. We'll put a link to that up so you can see it. Um, so basically you need a degree in medicine from one of those recognised bodies. Uh, you will also need to have completed at least one year post-graduation, so that can be your internship year, it can be your first year um, out of med school, um, and at that point you'll be eligible to sit MRCP part one. Gather your notes during that first year, start doing your revision, if you're here to, if you're serious about coming as quickly as possible, in theory you could pass that exam the moment that you've finished your first year of um, medical practice. Um, it's important to note that once you move on to part two, you can't have had more than six failed attempts at part one. So it is important to try and get it right as early as possible. We're gonna talk a bit later in the video about the pass rates for part one, two and paces, um, but they are quite high. So uh, it's important to know that um, if you fail part one, then it's gonna be hard to move on to part two, particularly if you're gonna fail more than six times. Might seem like a lot, but it's a tough exam. Um, it's exactly the same moving then from part uh, two on to completing. So, Important to note, you can actually sit these in any order. You could sit paces before part two if you wanted to, though it is generally recommended that you do part two first and then paces. And the, the MRCP advise that you get at least three years of clinical experience before sitting paces itself. So in theory, after one year of medical practice, you could do part one, then perhaps two years in, you do part two, and then three years in, you'd be eligible to complete and sit paces. So it, it's a long process. It's gonna take you a long time to get there. And if you're serious about it, start preparing really, really early on. Before we get on to the actual structure of the exams and the pass rates of each individual section, uh, it's important to note the prices of the exams. They are expensive, um, so it's important to think about your financial situation well in advance and prepare yourself for the amount it's gonna cost over the two or three years that it's gonna take to pass the exams. Um, current prices are 616 pounds for part one, 
616 again for part two and 1202 for paces itself. Um, it's 2023 at the moment, but we will try and keep the prices updated as this video uh, gets older in time. Uh, we'll write them in the notes. But collectively there, you're looking at about two and a half thousand pounds to sit the exams. So they are very costly and you should think about that long in advance um, before you're preparing to, to study and sit them. So the structure of the part one examination is that you are gonna do it all in one day. You're gonna be given two exam papers each with 100 questions and you're given three hours to sit each paper. So very challenging exam, you're in for a long and tough day when you do sit it. Um, you'll be pleased to know though that it is multiple choice which might make things slightly easier. Um, you're given five options for each question and there's no negative marking so it's important to answer every question because you won't be scored negatively uh, if you provide a wrong answer. Um, the exams themselves are testing your knowledge of clinical sciences uh, and medical disorders. So it's all of the usual stuff that you would have learned at medical school and in your uh, first year of medical practice. And it covers a wide range of topics, cardiology, neurology, geriatrics, psychiatry, the whole field of medicine spectrum. Um, so lots of questions, lots of things to study up and revise. Uh, the pass rates for the MRCP part one are actually only 40 to 50%, which may be reflective of the, the kind of lower level of experience that you're coming in with at that point in time. Um, but keep that in mind, it's actually a surprisingly low pass rate. So um, you might wanna think about studying very hard for these exams, don't take them lightly. You might think, yep, they'll be easy. Uh, you know, I can sit through these, it's only part one. But actually take them really seriously, because keep in mind, You've only got six attempts before you've got to get through to part two and paces. There's a lot of similarities in part two to part one. So you're still going to sit two exams, two test papers on one single day, each with 100 questions and each uh, multiple choice answers. You're going to be assessed on your clinical knowledge and skills However, this time you're going to be given uh, several clinical images as well. So you might be given MRI scans or x-rays or anything along those lines. Um, the recommendation is that you've sat at least 36 months of clinical experience before you sit part two. So uh, the pass rate is actually a little bit higher at this point in time. So you're looking at 60 to 70%. Now, just because that pass rate's higher doesn't mean you shouldn't take the exam seriously. Obviously, you're going to do lots and lots of preparation, but hopefully, with three years of medical practice behind you, you will have actually faced a lot of the scenarios that you're contending with in the exam itself. So it should be, in theory, a little bit easier. So the final part, the PACES exam. Uh, this is actually a lot more complicated and that's why there's a really low availability for seats at the moment. Um, you've probably heard about this. There seems to be a massive backlog since COVID um, and it is tricky to get PACES seats outside of the UK and obviously the ones in the UK are often for doctors who are coming through UK training system. So very hard to get onto and we would really recommend registering very, very early for that as soon as you possibly can and obviously as soon as you've got your part two uh, results. Um, now the structure of the exam itself is actually set, it's a, a clinical assessment, so you are in a practical environment, um, you're given five stations and in 2023 uh, the MRCP have introduced a new carousel, so it's five stations, uh, you're still seeing eight patients across those stations, but you're being assessed far more in your communication and consultation skills as well, so it still includes the neurological uh, cardiovascular, respiratory and abdominal assessments, um, but also several stations or half stations that are testing your communication skills and your consultation skills as well. So have a look at the new PACES carousel because it has changed uh, just this year and it's a little bit different uh, in its layout to the old system. So in terms of tips for preparing for the MRCP exams, this might all sound quite elementary, but it's all about practice, practice, practice. Um, 
Devise a study plan really early on. So uh, get stuck into your studying for paces right at the point that you pass your MBBS if you can. Get started as early as you can. Um, there's loads of textbooks out there and there's loads of past papers to have a look at. Um, so I think that's probably the easiest point to start with, for, particularly for part one and part two. Um, is to revise the MCQ questions. There's loads that you can download on the internet, so take a look at those and get preparing early. Get a study partner, someone to test you, that's always a great plan as well. Um, and in terms of the paces uh, set up, obviously it's a little bit trickier to prepare for because it is a clinical assessment, but hopefully you'll be doing a lot of it in your day-to-day -day practice um, as you work through uh, your first few years in medical practice. So great idea to kind of be implementing all the skills day-to-day -day, and then hopefully the exam will be an absolute breeze for you as well. Um, be familiar with the marking schemes, be familiar with all the exam regulations before you start the uh, preparation for the exams. Obviously, if you know how you're going to be assessed, there'll be no surprises on the day. Speaking of which, um, on the day itself, um, be prepared, get there nice and early, um, arrive with plenty of time to spare, pack everything you need the night before, and make sure that you're feeling safe and comfortable um, for your arrival. Obviously, it's going to be a stressful day, so bring lots of um, snacks and be prepared for a long, long day um, and, and make sure you've got everything with you. It's up to you whether you sit the MRCP first or whether you choose to do your English language exams uh, before that. Entirely your choice, obviously you might want to do them earlier on, but keep in mind that the English language exams are going to be valid for two years. So you might want to think about passing them around the same time as your paces, perhaps your part two, um, so that they coincide and you can get registered with the GMC at that point. Those are the two main things that you're going to need for your GMC registration, or certainly the two that are going to require some work from you, some input from you. Um, so make sure you've got either OET with all Bs or IELTS with a 7.5 and uh, minimum sevens in each element, alongside what we've discussed, MRCP. There's a few other documents that the GMC will need, so your certificates of good standing, copy of your passport, your primary medical qualification, of course. Um, so once you've got all of that together, you can make the application online to the GMC. It's quite straightforward and you should be invited to an ID check. You don't have to go in person to do an ID check anymore. They're all done online, so hopefully that's a quite straightforward process. Um, and I suppose the beautiful thing at this point in time is that once you've got MRCP, you've completed your OET and IELTS and you've got your GMC registration, um, you're then open to lots and lots of opportunity within the NHS. Um, there's such a big demand for doctors at the moment in medicine. The, the kind of standard starting point is for doctors to come in and do uh, either acute, general or geriatric medicine, depending on their background. If you've worked in a busier inpatient facing setting, it's probably acute. If it's more an outpatient facing general medicine type uh, area that you've worked in, you might want to consider something in general or geriatrics. And then of course you've got all of the allied specialisms. Um, most seem to come in through the route of doing a bit of general first and then pursuing a specialist field. But it's up to you if you've got lots of experience in a specialist field, it is an option. Um, and the demand is so high at the moment. Um, BDI Resourcing, our, our company, uh, help doctors from all around the world into the NHS. And we've literally got hundreds of uh, medicine doctors taking jobs in the NHS every single year. Um, so it's a really exciting time to sit the MRCP exams and to join the NHS. I hope this video has been interesting and useful to doctors who are thinking about sitting MRCP or who are maybe partway through the exam process. Um, if it's your ambition to come to the NHS, we'd love to hear from you. So uh, please do drop us some comments. Please do send your CV across to apply at bdiresourcing.com. We'll put the contact details up at the end of the video. We welcome any questions.